Before we get into Bosnia, let's review the big picture. Every place we're visiting on this trip was part of Yugoslavia, which means literally the land or union of the South Slavic peoples. The country of Yugoslavia lasted roughly from the end of World War I until the 1990s. While its ethnic makeup shaped its recent history, the differences between its groups can be subtle and confusing. That's because the major ethnicities of Yugoslavia were all South Slavs. They have the same ancestors and speak closely related languages. The defining difference is that they adopted different religions, brought here over the centuries by various emperors, missionaries, bishops, and sultans. Catholic South Slavs are called Croats. Orthodox Christian South Slavs are called Serbs. And Muslim South Slavs are called Bosniaks. For the most part, there's no way that a casual visitor can determine the religion or loyalties of the people just by looking at them. So we can better understand this troubled union, I'm joined by my friend and co-author of my guidebook to this region, Cameron Hewitt. It just seems like an unlikely union. Oh, well, it was extremely unlikely. You had all these different groups in this one territory. There's only one person who was able to hold it together successfully. That was Marshal Tito, who ruled Yugoslavia. He respected all the diversity within the country, but he believed above all in Yugoslav unity. He said that the divisions between the different groups should be like the white lines in a marble column. That marble column didn't last very long. No, it didn't last very long. Uh, after Tito died in 1980, this very delicate balance he created started to topple. Different groups started to grab for more power and authority, and before long, the whole thing just fell apart. Now, I've always just thought of it as just a, a place with so much ethnic baggage that it was just, a, without Tito, a bloody mess waiting to happen. And that's definitely one factor. There's no question that this region has a long history of groups not getting along with each other, lots of warfare. On the other hand, that can't be the only reason. There were long periods of peace in their history as well. In this case, you had politicians who were taking advantage of those feelings, manipulating those feelings. It was the combination of those two factors that, that caused Yugoslavia to fall apart in such a violent way. But it's a horrible war. It was a horrific war. I mean, as each group tried to grab for more of what they thought was their territory, this is the conflict that introduced the term ethnic cleansing into our vocabulary. And much of the worst happened here in Bosnia. That's because this was Yugoslavia's crossroads of cultures. Looking at the architecture, you can see this is where its three major ethnicities, Catholic Croats, Orthodox Serbs, and Muslim Bosniaks all came together. In the 1990s, Bosnia was ripped apart by a three-way war between these groups. So after a few bloody years of fighting, all the different factions across Yugoslavia finally laid down their arms and agreed to peace accords in 1995. Uh, here in Bosnia, they had to actually create a semi-autonomous Serb state within the larger state of Bosnia to preserve that balance. 